Well, hey everybody, Brian Goulet here with Drew Brown. And uh, the, <laughs> this has been a heck of a year, let me tell you. 2020, we were, we were debating, like, should we do a hottest pens of 2020 or should we just try to forget this year as quickly as possible? Can uh, we do both? <laughs> yeah, I think we can. I think Let's we can immortalize. forget the year as soon as we're done with this video. Yeah, That's there you go. There you go. That sounds good. This will be like a nice little uh, punctuation mark on the year. We'll say, you know what? 2020 was a little crazy, a little COVID, quarantine, all these disruptions and stuff. But uh, there were actually some cool pens that came out this year. I got to say, things got a little wacky in terms of manufacturers and supply chain and availability. We ourselves shut down for almost two months, you know, but we're gonna pretend like all that doesn't really matter. And we're just gonna talk about some cool pens. So uh, we, we chose some. Now, granted, these are all pens that we have had here at Goulet Pens. There may have been other great pens that came out and it was just kind of not on our radar. We were a little distracted with a lot of other things that were going on. So we weren't paying much attention to what was going on outside of our little world. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> these are these are some of the best ones that we thought of and uh we uh it's completely subjective like 100 percent uh and uh we put them in chronological order for you to enjoy and then drew and i are just gonna banter on them and say ridiculous things and entertain you uh while you're uh, thinking about uh how much better 21 2021 should be so without further ado let's talk about the hottest pens of 2020 there we go now the pens didn't care that uh 2020 was the Mad Max type future and not the fun Star Trek type future that we all thought it was going to be. So at least we can lose ourselves in the uh, the retail therapy of the pen world, which hopefully you did at some point in 2020. I know I did. Oh yeah, for sure. I think we all did. Uh, well, let's start out with uh, number one, the first one that was uh, released in the in the chronology. We have the Monteverde Innova limited edition. Now, this was actually a pen that was set to release in 2019 to mark Monteverde's 20th anniversary because they started in 1999, and uh, basically what happened is there were delays on the nibs, so they didn't come out with the pens until early 2020. Um, they came out with several trims, though. They came out with some later in September of 2020. So I'm calling this more of a 2020 pen, even though it was to celebrate 2019. Sure. Um, it, was a, it was a revamp of the original pen. Actually, the um, Innova was the first ca uh, carbon fiber pen that Monteverde came out with. It was very innovative for the time. And of course, Monteverde has come out with a slew of carbon fiber pens since then. So it was a very notable notable pen i think in their in their history yeah and overall like in the last 10 years you know i don't know maybe 20 but you know carbon fiber is not something you think of being you know 20 years old cool well, i don't know when when did the fast and furious start coming up i feel like i i, I remember oh. seeing a lot of cool carbon fiber as soon as oh, like I the I remember distinctly when that came out. Drew. I bet you do. I bet you do. You and Rachel that was both. It. That was in the year 2000. Yeah. Okay. So what, hey, I was that, 16 when that, that, that was 16 actually, when Fast and Furious came out. That actually makes sense because I remember it, when the whole street racing thing hit like its peak level of popularity, carbon oh, yeah. fiber was cool. Remember Need for Speed Underground? Like, oh, oh 100%. I, I know you oh. do. <laughs> Oh, that I had was, all, like every Need for Speed game basically yeah, ever created. Yeah. That was when I first started seeing a lot of carbon fiber stuff. So honestly, 2009... Uh, um, uh, makes a lot of sense. Um, not 2009, uh, 1999. But uh, yeah, no, this this pen was huge. And honestly, if I had to sum this pen up in one word, it would be value. Because when I heard that this pen was going to be around 50 bucks, I was like, what? With, you know, a Yovo nib, carbon fiber body, like it is a nice pen. You get a ton of pen for that amount of money. Like for that cash layout, you get a lot of bang for your buck. I really love this pen. I bought one as soon as it came out, the uh, um, the rose gold one. And it came with ink too. It came in a nice presentation box with some ink and a little pin. It was, it was fantastic. Though I do have to correct myself. The original Fast and Furious was actually 2001. So I was wrong on that. I was 17 when it came out, not 16. My bad. Well, there's only about 300 of them. So I think we'll forgive you on that one. One of the most successful franchises of all time. <sighs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> Much to your dismay. It's fine. It's just not my thing. But I will never take that away from you and Rachel. We are big fans. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what what's one word that you would des describe this pen, Drew? I, I'm, I'm going to go with value. What about you? Um, <laughs> I'll say fast. Yeah, because there we I go. have that association with carbon fiber yeah. being fast, lightweight, fast speed. I don't sure. know. Sure. Drew actually prepared. I was like, we should come up with an idea, one word for every pen, and he prepared, and I didn't. So mine are going to be all on the fly. 
<laughs> Sorry, All right, next. When your next boss tells ben. you to prepare, I guess you shouldn't. Never mind. Yeah, I, I don't even <laughs> listen to myself. That's pretty bad. Uh, unmanageable over here. So next pen we have is a Twisby 580 ALR Ooh. Prussian Blue. And man, this pen looks so good. As soon as this pen came out, I was like, oh, dang. And then I opened it up and saw it in person for the first time. I was like, oh, man, this is even better than I thought. I think there was a universal oh, dang across the universe when this pen so. came out. And um, the universe. It, it was just, yeah, absolutely. It was like a, oh. it was like the Big Bang, but it was the oh, dang. And um, <laughs> the big O dang. <laughs> it was the big O dang. Everybody wow. said it. And um, you brought up a good point uh, earlier where you mentioned that the ALR has that textured grip. So it isn't always everybody's bag of uh, cup of tea. <laughs> bag of tea. I don't know. Because it, it it's tactically a little funky for some people. But I love it. I don't have a problem. But this pen, I guess the color just, it overruled all of those concerns and it was huge. I think so. And Rachel specifically hates the texture of this pen. She's tried so hard to like it. Uh, it wasn't enough to convert her, but she does love the color, she admits. It's a so, really, really uh, nice color. Exactly. So what's one, what one word would you have for this one, Drew? This one was the easiest one because this we're coming up with the hottest pens of 2020 list. The word for this pen is hot because when this pen landed, everybody was posting pictures of it. It could not get on your Instagram fast enough. It was all over yep. Reddit. It was everywhere. People wanted this pen just so they could say they got one. Like it was huge and it was just hot. It defined it. It, it con constituted everything that defines a hot item. So, yeah. Uh, my one word is dang, because that's just the only thing I can like see. I'm like, dang, dang. it's a good looking pen. It is. <laughs> All right. The next one we have is actually the Lamy Safari Candies, specifically the Mango. Now, all three of these pens came out at once. I kind of arbitrarily chose the Mango, uh, but I think it was actually the most popular one, surprisingly. Like, I wouldn't have thought that that would have been the most popular, but it was. Yeah, yellows this... normally aren't popular, but this is not just a yellow. It is It is a, I don't know, it's, an edible It's a yellow. mango. It, it, looks, it looks like the flesh of a mango fruit. Yeah, like, it looks, if I it was to yummy. open it up, if I opened it up and there was a pen inside my mango fruit, it would be the Lamy Safari Mango. Because <laughs> that happens. That would be no, weird, but... All three of these look very tasty. <laughs> Indeed. And, uh, and I think part of the reason this one was the best is because it had a matching ink. I think that's maybe why it sold a little bit better than yep. the others. And the ink was pretty decent too. You would think like, you know, yellow, orange, it's not gonna be great, but it was dark enough to like actually use and, and it matched the pen really well. So I think they did a good job with that. Um, yeah, you know, and, and it'd, be, it'd be sad if there was a Hottest Pens of 2020 list that did not include the annual Safari. Usually those make a splash, yeah. even when they're not as lovely a color as these were, but these per these particularly were really, really nice. Yeah, and you know, they've done the like multi-pen Safari release for a couple of years in a row now. Mm -hmm. um, and they went with the matte theme, which I think is good because they have a lot of shiny pens. So now there's definitely more, you know, matte that's in the mix. And I think they they did a good job with that. Yeah, if I had to use one word to describe these, Brian, mm. I think of Koosh Balls. I don't know why, but the colors just make me think of Koosh Balls, so I'm just going to go with Koosh. They're Koosh. They're Koosh. I was going to say Juicy. Koosh and Juicy. Get it right mango. here. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, when you look at all three together... Brings back some '90s kids' memory. I just I see them in the in like that cardboard display box in front of KB Toys, just you know, uh, filled up with a bunch of random koosh balls that you don't really need to buy. What are you gonna do with those? Nothing. But happy to say that the Safari is more useful than a koosh ball. Depends what you're using it for, I guess. <laughs> guess. <laughs> moving, <laughs> moving on. Yeah. Next one we have this pen. Uh, May was much anticipated, got a lot of attention around it, both before, during, and after its launch. This is the Platinum Curidas. This is a retractable nib fountain pen. A lot of people were comparing it to the Pilot Vanishing Point because frankly, there just aren't that many retractable nib pens. So pretty much the, all the questions we got were, how does it compare to a Vanishing Point? How does it compare to the Lamy's Dialogue 3? And that's about it because that's pretty much all there is. Yeah, you're not um, gonna avoid that comparison when you come out with a retractable fountain pen. 
Yeah, especially because this one was about half the price of that, right? So, um, you know, I think a lot of people um, were drawn to the transparent, you know, kind of translucent colors of it. So you can see what's going on inside of it. That's pretty cool because there's just all kinds of springs and, you know, posts and little compartments for things to fit into. It's it's definitely a fun fiddling pen, I will say that. Um, but you know, it's interesting. You can take the clip off. There's a lot of a lot of interesting, compelling things happening with it. You know, definitely had some controversy around it when it first came out. Drew working on the customer service side of things. I'm yeah, sure yeah. You've it was it was a thing it wasn't, or two about this pen. Yeah, it wasn't perfect. It wasn't flawless. And obviously it had a lot of eyes on it. And for mm -hmm. a retractable nib fountain pen, that was leagues more affordable than any other retra retractable fountain pen on the market, you're, it's going to be scrutinized. And sadly, oh, yeah. it is going to be compared to the ones that are twice the price. So it, it's kind of starting off in a not so great position. But it yeah. was it was a scrappy pen. You know, it was very ambitious. It was very bold. Mm. And it, it reminded me of that little uh, that little chicken hawk from Looney Tunes that Foghorn and Leghorn was always having to deal with. Like the little tiny thing that was just like ready to fight, you know, like, yeah. ah, come on, what are you going to do? You know, uh, but, you know, it, it tried its best. And when the smoke had cleared, it's still there. It's still a solid pen. No, yeah. it's not the vanishing point killer, but I don't, I would argue that it probably wasn't trying to be, you know, it wasn't, it's, it really wasn't. And anytime that came up, I was like, that's really not, it's, it's a different pen. Like really it's a different pen. Uh, I still like it for what it is. I think it's a great pen. I think the vanishing point's a great pen. And also I think what happened right at that time, think about like all the disruptions that started to happen in that March, April timeframe earlier this year, COVID started to do crazy stuff, locking things down, you know, especially like in Japan, where these are coming from, it had to travel all the way across the US to get to us. Crazy stuff was unfolding. Stock was getting like held up and we released them, but then, you know, they, they sold quickly, but then also we didn't get restocked. So then there was like kind of a feeding frenzy of people couldn't get them. And then it was confusing. So there was a lot of just stuff that got thrown into the mix, but when all was said and done, you know, it's a solid pen and uh, there's a lot of excitement that happened around it. I think it's definitely a notable pen for the year. So um, I think my word to uh, describe this pen would be exciting because there was a lot of excitement, at least on our end, on the backside of yeah, things. Yeah, it was on very the, exciting. The back end and of you, the house is exciting. And, and you have to give them credit for innovation. In the fountain pen world, there's you know, there's only so much you can innovate. And just when I see other brands trying to really push the envelope, they're like, why not try this thing? Even though the Vanishing Point has the retractable, you know, thing kind of on lock, right? Like it's, you're not going to unseat it, but just the fact that they're trying something new, like I got to applaud that. Right there. So innovating, is that your, is that your word? Um, I actually went with uh, ambitious. Ambitious. Fair enough. I think that fits it. All right, next one, we're going to take a hard turn in another direction. This is the Diplomat Aero Antique Rose. Um, really, really hot pen. Surprisingly, like we thought it would do okay, but wow, was it really popular. This was actually an exclusive launch that we had. So it's not exclusive to us like forever, but we were the first ones to come out with it back in May, um, which was really exciting. You know, Rachel helped choose the color, did the match up with the nice like um, matte silver trim. It just looked really good. Um, that pale pink, the millennial pink. I think we could have named it millennial pink and it would have been very fitting, um, you know, because that's the trendy trendy kind of color there um, wasn't it and, it was uh, the pantone color of the year last year right i think so because this maybe. year this year was that classic blue i believe yeah yeah and then I last was, year i think it was millennial pink or they might have been be. the year before could be i can't remember you and i are not known for having the strongest memories no <laughs> and we didn't research ahead of time but um you know solid pen number six yovo nib Diplomat makes great pens. The Arrow is definitely their most popular uh, amongst the, the pens that we carry, at least. And uh, that cap, just the closure of that cap, so satisfying. I just can't get enough of it. Um, it's delightful. So, yeah. It's delightful. And you know what I also think is fun is, you know, capping it back and forth over and over and over again is a lot of fun, but it's also a lot mm. of fun to unscrew the barrel from the grip section. And if you just spin it really hard, it goes, and it kind of spins and then, yeah, it meets that hard stop. So I, I will, I would play with this pen all day. Awesome. So what's your, what's your word for this pen, Drew? Um, I, I this one's boring, but I just said it was present. It was very point mm. in time, like very mm. in the now. I think that it hit right when it needed to for this particular color to be as popular as it was. Hmm. I'm gonna say po poignant. Poignant. Mm. 
poignant. Yeah, just feels like it. This pen knows what it is. It knows who it's for. It's just very, like, succinct, like very poignant. Wow, getting all existential mm. on us, Brian. Indeed, I am. All right. All right, moving along. This one is really exciting, and it was a big deal for us. We can't go without talking about picking up the new brand, Sailor. So this happened for us two days after we shut down our, our um, you know, uh, shipping operation. Uh, and so that was uh, really kind of a bummer, but uh, we were able to pick up the brand after months of preparation, really years of having conversations around relaunching the brand Sailor. Um, and so that was really exciting for us. But then the first pen, it's the pen I have on the list actually is the Wicked Witch of the West 1911. Technically, it's two pens. It was the 1911S and the 1911L. I'm just kind of lumping them into one thing because it's, you know, close enough. Um, but dark purple pen, slight bit of translucency, black ion trim. It just looks so good. It's like the like the sailor version of, of like the, the Lamy Dark Lilac Safari. You know, it's like that same kind of vibe. They needed a purple like this. They already had it planned. We had nothing to do with this. It just happened to be the first North American exclusive after we picked up the brand and we got to be involved in it and we were so excited for that. So that was pretty awesome. It was also, also challenging because we weren't shipping at the time. So we were selling this pen, but we weren't shipping orders yet. So it was like, well, you can reserve it and we'll have it for you. We have the pens, but we can't ship it because we might die. So we didn't want to, didn't want to do anything unsafe for our team, but still it was a hot pen. They all sold and uh, it's been a great pen for this year. Yeah, I, I, if you would have told me that after all the prep of relaunching Sailor that we would be launching such a huge brand the week that we did where we were we were ostensibly shut down entirely. And yeah. so just the popularity that this pen had was really valid, validating like, hey, you know what? Not only are our customers still willing to support us, but this brand is still going to kick some butt. So it That's was right. really a, an exciting pen to launch. And uh, my word for this pen was culmination because this mm. pen represented so much and it delivered in a way that I didn't think it could have delivered in the time that it did. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Um. Gotta think of my word. The word that comes to mind is so overbaked and overused, but but synergy is the word that comes to mind for me. It's it's very much a business buzzword. In fact, if you've seen the movie um, uh, In Good Company with Topher Grace, like the CEO of his company does this whole bit where he's like way corporate overbaked and he does this like synergy like he does oh, this God. this kind of thing oh and like topher grace like asks him a question and he totally gives him some bs business speak oh, kind of answer you around synergy so but but honestly that's what's coming to mind it really it feels like the timing was right for mm -hmm. our for our company and for theirs and then just to hit it with a, such a hot looking pen like this it just all it all just worked it just worked yeah so there you go all right Speaking of things that just work, um, this is actually a, a few pens. I, I had a hard time narrowing it down, but I can explain myself on this one, Drew. Um, well, so I wish is... you would. <laughs> oh, nice. That was good. Um, these are Conklin wood pens. So it's, it's really the Endura and the All-American. We came out with several wood pens in both of these models. Um, the All-American, you know, we came out with more of them. So maybe that was a little more popular. Um, so that's kind of, if I had to lead with it, I'll say the All-American. But, uh, you know, we had the Endura Vera wood, All-American Ebony, All-American Walnut. These all came in like the July timeframe. Um, I'm a woodworker. I love wood and I love wood pens. So to have like a really like actually nice, good looking wood pen that is not just like some sliver of wood that's like put into a giant metal pen, but like <laughs> a mostly wood pen. You're getting to like really feel the wood and that the wood is the standoff feature. That just makes my soul happy. So I'm pretty much always gonna wanna pick up any wood pen. I mean, literally it's like when we have our product meetings and they're like, Okay, here's a wood pen. Like we know Brian wants it. Like, I don't even have to say anything. I'm no, like, we not only know that Brian wants it. We know that Brian's gonna, it. Brian's gonna give them a hard time asking like, what type of wood? Where's it from? What 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 do you mean? This type? There's many many different types of this wood. Which type of which type? 
It's like, oh, absolutely. Gosh. Brian, you're going to oh, have to yeah, leave they, the room while we discuss this. <laughs> oh, 100%. They came out with the uh, All American Ebony, and I was like, well, is this, you know, Gabon ebony? Is this black and white ebony? Like, which, you know, there's different types of ebony out there. Like, where is this coming from? Is this sustainably harvested? It's wood. You know, is this, you know, is this CITES listed? Like, we got to know these things. CITES is a list that talks about the woods that are, you know, soon to be endangered. So you have to go, you know, you got to make sure that it's properly sourced because it's a natural material, right? Like, you can't just, you know, chop everything down and then it won't grow. You don't have anything to grow back. <laughs> no, you know, you, you got to take care. You got to preserve Fair these enough. things, Drew. Fair enough. It Fair matters. Enough. Um, what I really like about the wood on the All American is that it's a larger pen, and I think that the natural aspects of the wood come out really, really nice. It's just a bigger canvas for the mm -hmm. wood grain and all the, you know, um, you know, all the details to pop a little bit more. Yep, and that that walnut was actually harvested from America. That's American wood right there. There you go. So they they traced it all the way back. I forget which state it's from. I think it's Missouri, but yeah, they 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 delivered on that one. So all right, yeah. Um, all right, so what's your word for this one, Drew? Uh, Semi-ironically, I'm going to say solid because um, wood, obviously. But whenever nice. there is a really nice-looking wood pen, it just does well. People like the feel. It's usually very unique. And honestly, mm -hmm. with these pens, at the price they're at, under $100, like, come on. That is a solid price point. Yes. Yeah, for me, um, there's a couple of words that come to mind uh and none of which are actually hitting the mark because my brain is <laughs> like a little scrambled um none of which are good but i'm gonna say I to, anyway. no it's not it's not the right word I'm, I'm struggling to come up with just the right word it's um i want to say like retribution retaliation that's that's a negative context what, what is it when something's like therapeutic it like you know you you like it's res it resolving i don't know let me let me just talk mm, through it and okay. we'll see if we can find the word. But you know, we started out Goulet pens. I was making pens by hand out of wood. Mm -hmm. I was I was I personally was never able to make it a profitable venture, and mm -hmm. I had to resolve myself to the fact that I was not able to produce as a craftsman a sustainable wood pen. So to now be involved with a company like Conklin, as historic as that brand is, to be able to offer an affordable, a high quality wood pen, it just, it like, it's, it's, there's a word for it. Like I've had this like pain in my heart of not being able to do that hmm. from my past passions. And now I'm able to do it in a different way. I'm just not the one actually making the pens. All right. Well, I'm, we've already got three comments on YouTube telling you exactly what you need. I know. Like Drew and I both are just like, we're going to remember this like three questions from now. I'm oh, just yeah. going to yell out the word. I'm going to scream it at it. dinner tonight. I'll find it. Yeah. But anyway, wood pens, love them. Solid. All right. Going along with Conklin, they had another great pen that we were mm. involved with, with some other natural materials. That's true. Though a very different look than wood. Very. This is the Conklin Endura Abalone. Now, you talk about an attractive looking pen. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Easy there. Uh, like it's oof. a lovely pen. Like it, it gets lovely. me a little it gets me a little heated to think about this pen because it's just so much abalone. It's it's all over the dang pen. And uh, it just it's an attractive looking pen. It's got a metal grip. That's like the one downside if I have to like say something about it. The clip like covers up too much of the abalone in my opinion, you know, <laughs> just because I want to see it all. Yeah. But there's this thing is just covered in abalone. You just don't see pens like that. No. That look this good, that have a good fit and finish in this price point, it's really hard to do. Cause it's a natural material, comes out of a shell. You know, they have to like they have to harvest these things. It's uh, you know, it's not the easiest thing to do in the world and to do it sustainably. So um, great pen. They had, you know, at this point, they've got Yovo nibs on yeah. their pens and we're starting to see those coming out. And so it's like, okay, you know, we got years worth of like conversations and work from, you know, Conklin, from, you know, from us, like that's starting to come to fruition. It's just like, yes, yes, that is, that is amazing. So, they they really leveled fan. up their game with this pen. And like you said, it was a long time in the making, you know, coordinating with Yovo for as long as they have coming up with this pen. And when I held it in my hand and it looked way better than the uh, the renderings of the art that we had seen, it blew me away. And they I, I was not expecting this. Like Conklin makes some good pens, but this was next level as far as what my expectations were for where my expectations were for that brand. It, it absolutely 
Absolutely. All right. So what word would you describe the abalone drill? This is an overachiever. This one reached and grabbed something that it had no business, you know, getting to. Like it was like it it just jumped up far above what I've seen from Conklin in all of their pens in their entire line. This pen was like, "No, I'm going to be up here on this other pedestal where no one else is." I was like, "Okay, abalone." Yeah. Yeah. That abalone just like reaches up and punches you in the eyes. It did. It hurt. It's like no mercy. No mercy. Like a pro wrestler on pro wrestling night. I don't know sports, but <laughs> uh, my word is um, stunning. It's just stunning. I was literally just stunned when I saw this pen. So Stunningly beautiful. Stunning. Yep. Or bling also works, but we'll go with stunning. <laughs> All right. We're moving on later in the year. We now have a Twisby on the list, Drew. Twisby, they have uh, been doing some great colors, some great pens over the years. They have not done a whole lot with the VAC 700 recently, but they finally did. Twisby VAC 700 R Iris. So this is essentially a VAC 700 with rainbow trim. And let's be real, that looks awesome. <laughs> Yeah. Looks really cool. Rainbow on the nib, rainbow on the grip. A part like of the nib section. too, which like that that's even more impressive. We've seen the that rainbow effect on a Visconti nib on that watermark, you know, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But to, you know, portion it off like that, I've never seen that done. I know it's not easy. It's not easy and it's not cheap either. It's very difficult to do. Uh, Twisby nailed it. Now, the thing is, it launched on Fountain Pen Day in November. It sold out like immediately. And then it's been, they've been pretty seriously affected by COVID stuff and supply issues. So we're not going to see it again in 2020. It's still going to come out. It's not like gone forever, but there's just not that many of these pins out there. But for sure, if we'd had more of them, they would be flying. They were gone. I mean, I, I think it was what, like 20 minutes or something. It was crazy. So it was very much here and then gone. But with Twisby's reputation, we know how solid these pins are. I think this pen's going to be really popular ongoing. I, I I wanted to put it on the list anyway. Oh, yeah. No, it's without a doubt the, one of the most hot pens of 2020, for sure. They really pushed the envelope here. And yeah. I know that the um, uh, rainbow effect uh, is not everybody's cup of tea, but I think that this one strikes a nice of balance. It's not overwhelming. It's just accented. Um, did you make a joke? I didn't hear you, but you're smiling. What? I said it's a, or a bag of tea. Uh, yes, yes, very nice. Well, or bag of tea. speaking of puns, my word for this pen is going to be polarizing because, <laughs> because of the effect <laughs> and because, you know, some people love it, some people not so much, but everybody respects it, I mm. think. Maybe, I don't know, do, go for it. What do, do you they? think? I don't know. I don't know if universal respect of any pen is achievable. No, 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 of course not. Um, yeah, if I had to make up a word for this one, I would say, I would say tasty, just, just tasty. Like, More tasty than the candy yeah, safaris? Yeah, you get a little taste, yeah. Was that my word for the safaris? No, it was juicy, it was the safaris. <laughs> but you did- This one's not so juicy. You, yeah. This is more of like a, this is more of like a powdered donut, you know, like how okay. it's got that like, yeah, like, like, like a sweet, a sweet taste to it, but it's not like overwhelming. Not like a bar of chocolate where it's just like, a consistent, intense taste. It's just like a little, yeah, like a Did little Did you forget powder, to like eat lunch today? No, I'm just really hungry. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm also, I'm also standing up. I have this like standing desk thing that I've got. That's why I'm like moving all around. <laughs> and it's That's like, fine. we're shooting this, we're shooting this in the afternoon. So I'm like, I'm like really kind of wanting to move. That's fine. Anyway. As soon as we talked about abalone, I'm just like, bologna? What? I haven't had bologna, bologna. in a really long time. Mm. Oh yeah. When I was a kid, I would get the bologna with like the red, like strip oh, around yeah. the outside yeah. of it. How do you oh yeah, yeah. Fr fried bologna too. You know, we're in Virginia. Uh, t I didn't get a lot of fried bologna. My parents are from New England, so oh, that's not no. a, not a big thing up there. Oh. That's a southern southern thing. I'll make but, some one day, Brian. Oh, I've had it. I've had it. <laughs> okay. I've fried it myself too. I mean, it's, it's not bad. Okay, Don't get me right. wrong. That's... Yeah. No, I'm anyway, no stranger to, I'm no stranger to the bologna. Let's be real. <laughs> bologna. Yeah, I can oh, do a bologna. Gosh. So All since, right. since we've done that, <laughs> let's move it along. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's take it to, uh, let's take it back to platinum, right? Um, platinum so by being platinum, you twice. mean like, you know, probably a 3776 or one of those high end platinums, right? You would think. I no, would. We're, we're going, we're going bargain basement here. What? This is uh, down to the, yeah, we're going to be more flash of color. You know, 
I think, uh, I think especially for pens, this was a big thing this year, especially because manufacturing a whole new design of a pen is really hard. It's extremely time consuming and it was really difficult. There were a number of companies just in the pen world that had plans to launch new pens this year. It just got wrecked because all the different parts and clips and, and things you got to source out, anodizers and whoever, you know, with so many people shutting down, the supply chain just got so disrupted. So color changes to pens were a lot of what we were able to come out this year. Mm. Um, and, and that continues on with what normally is not a very popular pen, the Platinum Plazier. They came out with these ombre colors to mark the 10th anniversary of the Plazier. Um, and the Venus belt specifically, that pink and blue. Ah, oh, it looks so good. Looks so good. But all of them really, they look really good. You know, the Plazier, it's a seriously underrated pen. You know what I mean? Like it's it's very affordable in a $20 range. It's a great pen. It's got the same nib as what's on a preppy. Very reliable writer. It just doesn't get as much love as you would expect. So I was glad to see a little bit of life breathed into this pen and to see it received so well. Yeah, this one really surprised me. And I've, I've never been a huge fan of the Plazier, uh, but I they impressed me this year for real. And it was a fun little Rocky story where this pen that no one usually gives any sort of credit to came and it's, it's on the list. Like, and it's on the list for a good reason because it was hot yeah. and uh, it made a splash. So you gotta, gotta, you know, tip your hat to it. That's right. This one was relatively recent, came out in November, um, but it's been a big hit. Uh, and uh, what, what would you use to describe this one, Drew? I would say it's an underdog like Rocky. It, you know, no one probably gave it uh, a, a fighter's chance or puncher's chance, but it came out mm. swinging. And uh, now people are eagerly awaiting some more ombre colors from Platinum. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to say like, I don't know, trendy, maybe like the ombre. Sure. But I'm not super trendy myself, so don't look at me to really be on trend with things. But I know that ombre has been a trend in the past. So I just associate it with trendy things. So that's I don't know, Brian. You, you did invent a new abbreviation for baloney. So, I mean, I think that Balone. tomorrow pe people are going to be saying balone all over the place. And now and then you're, you're a trendsetter right there, dude. That's right. Leave me balone. That's what that should be like a <laughs> oh, expression. Yeah. Like, hey, what do you want for lunch? Leave me balone. Saying like, make me a baloney sandwich, you know? I'm just saying it could happen. Let's make it happen. Could what do you it, say, Drew? Could it? No! Leave me balloon now. Not it. so much. Stop. Oh we're gonna gosh. let we're gonna let the people decide <sighs> whether they want to be left balloon or not. <laughs> <laughs> it's catching on. You gotta admit, it's get it's getting catchier as oh, you hear. Oh gosh. I think it's getting catchier as I say it. So uh, um, my face know. hurts. We'll we'll see. So there you go. That's our list for That's uh, the top list. ten of twenty twenty. That's the Was list. Was it a good list? I don't know. We're trying. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, we're just real tired at the end of 2020, getting a little loopy, making up stupid expressions. But even still, we thought this would be fun for you all. Maybe as you're like in between your Christmas and New Year's break and you happen to watch this video, you'd be like, those silly pen guys. I'm glad they're still laughing and smiling, doing their thing, because we are. We certainly will be, but we're definitely in that boat. We're all feeling it together. And, uh, you know, at the end of the year, at least we can all enjoy being a part of this awesome fountain pen community and enjoying these fun products and uh, taking joy where we can find it, right? That's absolutely right. Well, speaking of joy, if you want to head over to gulaypens.com, you can give yourself a lot more joy by learning about these pens. Or buying little a Lamy Joy. A little shameless plug. Yeah, we have a, <laughs> a pen called the Lamy Joy over there. Um, great pens that we have. Uh, anything fountain pen related, hey, why not? It's a it's a great reprieve with everything that's going on in the world right now. Um, do you agree? Do you do you agree or disagree with this list? Uh, and what pens do you think should have been on here? What uh, expressions do you think really caught on? They're going to take the world by storm, perhaps. Whatever comments you have, we would love to hear about them. Or if there's any pens you're excited about in 2021, if you want to try and like, you know, do Ooh. a little, do a little minority report precog. You know what I mean? There's a throwback. Remember that movie, Drew? Yes, yeah. I do. That's right. So yeah, you can precog what you think is going to be a hot pen for 2021. I don't know. Precog is like a verb. Precog it I'm, up, man. Yeah, that's right. Precog some balloon in 2021. <laughs> What's uh, even happening right now? What we're are done. I even doing we're done. here? We're done is what's happening. I think we are done. So very done. Please like, share, and subscribe to this video if you think it's worth it. 
at this point, uh, I don't know if you do, but we would love we could, for you to be more involved you. in what we have going on. That helps us a ton. And here's to a brighter and more exciting 2021. Thanks, everybody, and right on.